All right, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, some basics about airship design. I'm going to be showing you an up-down machine and a forwards machine. Uh, both are turning compatible, so you can turn them any way. Uh, the segments are made so that when they're connected together, uh, they will all rotate together. Um, you won't have to reset any sequential gear shifts. Everything will work the same way it worked with any orientation. So starting with the up-down mechanism that we see in front of us. So what I've done is I've rigged up um, an upside and a downside. So what we have here is a pusher and a puller here. The puller is connected to the main chassis. On this side, we have the same configuration but inverted. Again, the puller is connected to the main chassis and this is important for rotation. So for this to rotate properly, the sticky piston has to be part of the main chassis. So if I go over here and I rotate, well, we see everything rotating together. Um, one note about rotation. So under here, there is a radial chassis. No part of the machine can pass the radial chassis. All right. So if the radial chassis were lower, it would catch onto it and uh, mess it up. So that's something to keep in mind with your designs. Um, I use a radial chassis because if I don't use a radial chassis, then I, then the speed controllers, they change direction, all right? So for a given input, this output here is gonna turn differently. I, I know it's weird, I don't know why it does that, but I found that if you do it this way, you can get everything to work the same way and I'll show you so we'll start off go ahead and hit this button and that's our up all right so this is a simple design I just use a one second delay I activate this gear shift and then I activate the gear shift up here so we see the piston goes out for one meter goes back in same thing and then we'll also try the down All right, so now the contraption is facing south. I'm gonna rotate it once, it's facing east. Upside goes up, downside goes down. We're facing north, upside goes up, downside goes down. Rotate it one last time. And we're facing west, upside goes up, and downside goes down. So this just proves to you guys that this works in any orientation, unchanged. Um, I'm going to leave an NBT schematic file in the comments so you guys can go ahead and download this and bring it to your world and uh, play around with it. The design is pretty simple, so there's three encased fans with magma cubes, um, an encased chain drive up here. You got a lever to activate the fans. So all that goes down to the speed controller. Output goes here, um, into the gear shift and into the piston. So it's basically the same thing repeated four times. Um, and I have the redstone transmitters here going to the redstone receivers. So um, now I'll head over to the forward engines so this only goes forward it does not go backwards why do i do that well because they're more complex so this this has an automatic mode you can set it and you can just cruise your airship forward in one direction um it's just something that i think is more fun and more realistic if you want to simulate a ship in real life how that works even though we're using pistons all right so there are two segments there is the pusher and the puller segment so Something important to remember is that pistons only move the other thing. So the pistons, they don't move themselves, they move something else. So in my designs, I have the main chassis be the puller, sorry, the pusher. And then the secondary, the secondary chassis is the puller. I got a little um, observer here, so that'll, you know, keep me going in automatic mode. I have... Um, so if this were in a ship, there would also be a uh, piece of redstone here um, to make it detect when it's pushed all the way out. I can show you guys later how that would work. 
So we have. So we have these, these ones each have eight uh, magma encased fans. So we have 512 SU, uh, which lets us go to 64 RPM, which is a bit faster than the up down engines. So I'll go ahead and do a little demo. So this is just well, that didn't do anything. Um, I need to pull it first. This one just pulls. That one pushes. Um, of course, you can make these go out any length you want. So I like to have longer pistons um, just to have, I guess, a smoother operation. You have less, I guess, when you have larger designs, you have flicker when, you're, um, when your ship goes from being an entity to being blocks. So by having a larger, a longer uh, piston shaft, you spend less, you spend more time moving and less time flickering. But this is just a short one, uh, just to show you guys. You can also turn. Oh, so that, so see that shows you what happens when it's not in position. Go ahead and fix that. All right, so you see how this. Secondary chassis isn't touching here. It needs to touch here to turn. And I'll show you why in a sec. All right, so now they're connected. If I get my wrench out, we'll look here. So I have five on the radial chassis. And you see now this secondary chassis here was white. So now that means it'll turn. There we go, it turns. And I'll show you that it also can move in every direction. I'll prove it for you guys. Then we're back to our original orientation. Okay, so that's, I'm just pressing the buttons here, but in real life, when you make a ship design, you don't, you don't wanna have to do that. So. What I have is a little redstone back here. You can't, yeah, you can see it better from here. I have this, um, this repeater locking the repeater that detects the observer signal and sends it to the sequential gear shift. I have, well, here I have a lever back here, but if it was in a ship, I'd have a, a redstone, wireless redstone signal. So right now it's locked. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that and we'll just cruise forward. Right, so you see how the primary is firing automatically, but not the secondary. So to do that, I need to make some redstone go here and trigger it. So what that would actually look like, let me get the redstone, redstone block. So what that would actually look like, and I hope this works, say the ship would look something like this. So why is that not working? Well, the redstone. We don't want that glue there. Ah, okay. It's got to be one further. And there we go. So we have a self-propelling machine. And see, it's going very fast, right? So it's not like it's bending. It's not lagging too much. Um, of course, when you have more blocks, it will lag more. So if you have a big ship uh, like I have, <laughs> it lags a lot more. Um, trying to work on more efficient designs so that I can make them smaller and um, not lag as much. I'm not sure what lags more, the the glue or the amount of blocks. Probably it's best to minimize as much as you can. So you see there is a lot of glue in these, uh, these engines. I could reduce the amount of blocks by using furnace engines, but in, I mean, that's it's, it's annoying to manage, so I'd rather not have to worry about fuel, so it's a, it's a trade-off. I do intend on making some 
uh, furnish engines at some point. I mean, this is a test that I've set up right here for an automatic furnace engine. It's uh, still a work in progress, but uh, I'm working on that. All right, so to stop this, you just hit this lever here, and there you go. So that's the forward engine, and just like the up-down engine, I will put a NVT schematic file um, in the comments, in the, in the video description, so uh, you guys can go out and, um, yeah, look at it and uh, import it into your world and uh, play with it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed it.